We've been using these Mopeka ultrasonic tank sensors for about four and a half years now, but we're gonna find out how accurate they really are. Propane systems are really vital in many RVs, particularly towables, and particularly when boondocking. When we boondock, we use propane for our refrigerator and for our water heater so that we don't use up our batteries. Our stove and our furnace run off propane as well. Additionally, some RVs even have propane generators. Regardless of how you use your propane, doing so without knowing how much you have is kind of like driving a car without having a fuel gauge. You just never know when it's gonna run out. Looks like we're going to need some gas. Well, how much gas do you think is in there right now? Well, it's on E. I don't want to be the one responsible for purchasing costly gasoline. <laughs> I know it's summer, but I am going to be using our furnace as an example and a benchmark for a lot of these tests and these calculations. But these same concepts and numbers apply across the board. Before we jump into the test that I made up to actually test these things, I want to cover a few important facts about propane. It's going to get a little bit sciencey, but not go too deep. But knowing these things will kind of help you understand your propane system, but also kind of explain some of the things that we're going to see in the test. First of all, our propane is stored in liquid format, but it's in a nice compressed tank. So it is a liquid and like any liquid, it will expand and contract with temperature. However, liquid propane, actually expands a lot more than something like, say, water. In fact, it expands 17 times more than water for the same given temperature difference. This massive amount of expansion that can happen with liquid propane is why our tanks are designed to only allow them to be filled to 80%. If you are allowed to fill a propane tank to 100% and then you take it someplace much warmer, like, say, the back seat of your car, it's a bad day. The other reason I mentioned this expansion and contraction is depending on how you're measuring it, like these do, where it actually measures the volume versus the weight, that volume will change quite a bit based on the temperature outside and based on the temperature of the tank itself and the liquid inside. For a baseline at 60 degrees Fahrenheit, one gallon of propane weighs 4.2 pounds. Now, as you increase temperature and that expands, that means your amount per gallon is gonna weigh less. As it cools, that gallon is going to weigh more. And it'll do that at a rate of 1.5% for every 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's not huge. It's not gonna expand and double or anything crazy like that, but you will see some expansion and contraction as you go from warmer climates to colder climates and so forth. The other reason I mention this is if you go to have your, say, 30 pound propane tank filled, a 30 pound tank at 60 degrees Fahrenheit is gonna hold about seven gallons. The other sciencey thing I wanna share with you about propane is that it boils at a temperature of negative 44 degrees Fahrenheit. Also, the rate of evaporation that's available in a tank varies a lot based on the temperature. These two things are very important when you're camping in the winter. We did a full winter camping video, so I'm not gonna go really deep into this. I'll link that below and at the end of this video. But the gist of it is, as temperature goes down, it boils off, vaporizes slower and slower. In fact, our 35,000 BTU furnace needs 35,000 BTUs of propane flowing through it. Check out this chart from the NRVTA. You can see that at zero degrees, we're not gonna get enough boil off. It's not gonna be able to evaporate fast enough to feed our furnace. So when you need your propane the most, is when it's really cold. That's also when it has trouble supplying the number of BTUs to actually run that furnace. So that's when you'll get into things like tank heaters. While we're talking about that chart from the NRVTA, if you wanna really get some hands-on knowledge and learn about your RV and how to take care of the various systems, that fundamentals course is awesome. Additionally, they now have a home study course, which is really that whole week long course, but in video format and available online. You don't get the hands-on stuff like you will in the actual class, but you still get the knowledge and you'll have it as a reference. I actually went back to it to look up some facts and to watch a few things that I had forgotten since I went to class. Speaking of our 35,000 BTU or 35 KBTU furnace is how long can we run it on say 30 pounds of propane? Well, there's some more sciencey stuff for that too. Each pound of propane holds about 21,000 
500 BTUs of energy. If I've got a 30 pound tank, that's about 645,000 BTUs of energy stored in that tank. So if you do some simple math and take that 645,000 BTUs of energy, divide it by 35,000, you can see that comes to around 18 hours of energy to actually run the furnace. Now, your furnace doesn't actually run and burn constantly. It cycles on and off about six times an hour. So you'll want to actually do some real world measurements. The best thing I can recommend is to actually take a measurement, whether that's you know your weight or the sonic things or whatever, in the morning, go through a full day, a full night of heating your RV in the winter, take another measurement, and then kind of get an idea for how much propane you're using per day. And that'll give you a better idea of how long your tank will last. So how do you know how much propane that you actually have on board right now so you can make that decision about how long it's going to last? Well, there are a couple of ways to measure the amount of propane that you have. The first and the most accurate way to measure your propane is to weigh it. The weight doesn't change on temperature, your mass stays the same, whether it expands or contracts, it's gonna weigh the same and contain the same amount of energy. So the best thing to do is weigh it, but weighing it is a huge pain. Your LP tanks are usually attached to your RV, strapped in somehow. So to weigh it, you gotta unstrap it, unhook it, get it out of there, weigh it. It's just not convenient. There's another way that I found online that I had never actually used before, and it's, uh, it's kind of a hot water test. The way this works is you take the boiling water, you pour it on the side of the tank, give it a few seconds to just drain off of there, and then you feel it. You'll actually find that the liquid propane absorbs that heat on the skin of the tank. It absorbs it much faster than the gas part does. So this creates a temperature differential with a warmer spot up top where the gas is and a colder spot on the bottom where the liquid propane is. And wherever that line is, that's how full your propane is. I was curious about this. So I did a test and I threw in a FLIR camera so you could actually visualize and see it. It's pretty cool and this method does work. So of course, you gotta go outside to do it. It's not super convenient. A third method is you can actually use a pressure gauge. They do make gauges that will go on the output of your tank in between your uh, fitting and your hose and give you a pressure measurement. And that will give you a rough estimate. Again, it's not precise, but you can get a rough estimate of how much propane is left in your system. In fact, that's also an added benefit of the gas top systems that we've talked about in the past. The gas top is a device that will actually cut off your propane if you have a leak from say a tire blowout or something along those lines. Believe it or not, your propane tanks have a excessive flow valve that will kick in if it detects excessive flow, but it does not shut off your propane completely. So those are a great idea regardless. But pressure gauges, they are a way to do it. Uh, they aren't super accurate and again, you gotta go outside and physically look at them to get a measurement. The fourth method and the way we use are these. Uh, these are little ultrasonic sensors and it has two magnets right here that help it to attach to the tank. You attach to the bottom directly in the center and it sends out a little ultrasonic pulse to figure out the depth of the liquid. And these things are great and we're gonna test them in just a minute. But the idea here is just to know how deep the liquid is versus the gas in the tank and to give you a measurement. Now the thing here is I mentioned you know you've got the issue with the liquid does expand and contract with the temperature so your ratings can change a little bit. I'm not sure how much but we're going to test it right now. My methodology for this test is really very simple. I've got a full propane tank that has had the valve closed on it since it was filled so I know it's hundred percent full. My plan is to take that tank and weigh it now I have the weight of a full tank plus the tank itself. From there, I'm going to let more and more propane out and take readings of weight and compared to what this reads all the way down to zero. At that point, I will have the weight of an empty tank. I should be able to calculate from there the weight of the propane that was in there and then compare that all the way down the ladder to empty and see how accurate this thing is. These tank sensors are really pretty simple. They've got these two magnets down here and it goes right on the bottom of your tank directly in the center. And then you can go into the software on your phone and you can actually program it and tell it whether it's a 30 pound tank, 20 pound tank, 40 pound tank, etc. So putting these on is really very simple. You just wanna tag it on the bottom there and make sure that it's centered. You'll see that I've got a little X marks the spot on ours. 
So just pop that on there. You can see in the app, it read empty when I had it disconnected and now it's reading 100%. Let's get our starting weight at 100% full and see what we got. I have this really cool digital luggage weight thing that I think goes up to 200 pounds. Should be plenty for us. 53.62. Forty seven point four. We don't need condensation going off our measurements. All right, roughly sixty nine, seventy percent now. All right, we're roughly down to sixty one percent. You may have noticed that as I'm doing this test, I had this little low quality uh, indicator here, and that's really kind of picky in my opinion. If you look at the uh, info here, and then you go to sensor position, you can see that it's pretty close. And as I move this a little bit, just even just getting up and off the bench here and down, it's pretty close. So I'm not that worried because the tank's never gonna be perfect. So let's see what we've got here at 61%. Looks like 43 on the nose. Oh, it's all frozen. I am gonna let this thaw for a bit. We've basically have run this thing down to 30%. This is all coated in ice. The bottom is all iced up. The constant evaporation, of course, just keeps getting colder and colder. It's freezing and it's, it's condensating and freezing on the outside. It's also freezing on the bottom where the sensor is. So I'm gonna give this a little time to warm up. I took my weight measurement at this current level, which is 30%. My guess is that after this warms up, uh, I will read the same weight, but this will read a little bit higher. My guess is that as it warms up, the liquid itself will expand a bit, but it should not increase in mass. So therefore the weight should be the same. So I'll be curious to see how that works out. All right, all of the ice has melted. I'm just gonna wipe it down here. My last weight measurement was 35.2-ish, and that was at 30%. 34.9. So we had about 0.2 of ice there. And we're reading 34%, which is kind of what I expected. So the weight really didn't change. Uh, we did change a little bit because we got all the ice off there. So let's get going and finish this test. All right, let's go to 10%. We're almost done. So I happen to notice that down at the bottom of the screen here, there was a firmware update available. And I updated the firmware wireless over Bluetooth, super easy. I'd never seen that before on the old sensors and I'd never noticed it before on these pro sensors, but now it's reading 12%. So maybe they fixed something in the firmware that helped it at its lower levels or maybe it just settled down, I don't know. I'm gonna continue bleeding to get to 10% and then we'll take another weight measurement. For the record, I did look it up and propane is not a greenhouse gas, so it's not like I'm releasing methane into the atmosphere. Uh, also, it's not toxic. It'll uh, displace oxygen, so it can suffocate you, uh, but it doesn't hurt you to breathe a little bit of it, so in case you're wondering. So now we bleed this thing down to zero and get our final measurement, and then we go crunch some numbers. So as you can see, it now shows it as empty, but I still can hear some gas coming out. So I think technically it's as good as empty. You're probably not gonna be able to run something off of that, but I'm gonna finish letting it uh, bleed down till I hear no more evaporation, meaning no more gas coming out. And then we'll measure. All right, there is no more gas coming out of here. So well, let's get our final measurement and be done with this. I think it took about six hours. <laughs> I thought it would go a lot faster than that. Basically 24.1-ish pounds. That's our final measurement. Now I shall go inside and compile the numbers. 
just to go over my measurements here this area over here this column these are my total weights is the actual weight that i measured at the very end this is the weight completely empty so this column here are these numbers minus this number so that way we have the weight of the actual propane inside the tank without the tank itself. Over in this column are the actual sensor readings. Those are what the reading was on the actual device. Again, plus or minus uh, a, a percentage point, 29 for 30, etc. This column over here to the right is the percentage by actual weight. So calculating based on the actual weight of the propane, that's what the true actual percentage is. And then of course, all the way over here on the very right, that is the deviation. That's the difference between the actual weight and what the sensor said. So you can see that as the measurements went on, the deviation got a little bit higher, which is kind of what we expected because the propane cools quite a bit and condenses and the sensor is gonna read a little bit uh, less on average than the true reading. In reality, that won't be the case because you're not gonna be just bleeding off propane like a crazy man. But the bottom line is, it works. It's really, really very accurate. If I had taken the time to let it cool down to ambient temperature between each measurement, which probably would have taken three days, uh, you know, I would have gotten more accurate measurements. But the general idea here is it works. The other added benefit of these over all of the other methods that you have to go outside is you don't have to go outside. You actually have a free app that you can download that works with these, talks to these over Bluetooth, and you can get very, very accurate measurements versus just a rough estimate like from a pressure gauge or something along those lines. The other benefit to the app is that it will actually give you push notifications and warn you when your propane is low. Additionally, Mopeka makes a thing called a Wi-Fi bridge that you can use with these. This is if you have the need to be able to check your propane levels remotely, the Wi-Fi bridge does that. It talks to the Bluetooth on one side and talks to Wi-Fi on the other side and allows you to check your tanks remotely over the internet. Bottom line is, these are great. They've been great sensors. Of course, we'll have links down below. If you liked this video and got some information out of it, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.